Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another related rates video. And um, the last one I did was on a right triangle, so uh, this one is on a non-right triangle. So we're going to have to get a little more creative, but again, because it's a triangle, we're dealing with what formulas do we know that um, have angles in them. Um, so like, if it's not a right, if it's a right triangle, then I'm thinking sine, cos, tan, right angle trig. If it's not, then I'm going to get a little bit creative. I'm going to think about cosine law, sine law, maybe that uh, area formula with A, B, sine of C, that kind of thing. So, um, but this is an example of using the cosine law. So let's have a read through, and then I'll draw a picture, and then we'll see what happens. So two sides of a triangle measure 5 meters and 8 meters in length. The angle between them is increasing at a rate of pi over 45 radians per second. How fast is the length of the third side? Speak English. How fast is the length of the third side changing when the contained angle is pi over three? So, again, when we're doing these questions, you want to look at what's fixed and what's changing. So, if I look at what's fixed, these two sides of the triangle are what's fixed. So that's um, that's important because I can go ahead and sub in those things right into my formula right away. Um, but if something's changing, we need to be able to take the derivative of it. So that is what the derivative is, right? The rate of something is changing. So the angle between them, so that's increasing in rate. So let's write down what we got. So we got the we got the rate of change of the angle, so d theta over dt is pi over 45 rad per second. Um, and we're looking for um, how fast is the length of the third side changing when the angle... Okay, so let's draw a picture, then we'll label what we have, then so I can write that last part. So here's my triangle. It's not a right triangle. Um, so this side's 8. This side's 5. Here's theta. So that's what we're looking for to be changing, the angle between them. Or sorry, that's what we have to be changing. Then we're looking for what this guy is changing. So I'm going to call this guy C. So little c. The reason why I'm doing that is because cosine law, the most foreign people is most, the foreign people is, or are most familiar with, is form with respect to c. So this form. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos of theta. Sometimes you see big c. All right, so the question you might be asking is, how do I know that this is cosine law question? So the reason why I know it's cosine law question is because I have side, side, side. So one of the sides I'm looking for, what that's what I have. I'm side, side, side. Really, that's how you know it's a cosine law question. Really, that's that's the best answer I can give you. Um, you just have to get, you know, you have to practice these things, and then you get a better feel for them. Immediately when I, when I was, when we're giving, given, you know, two sides and the contained angle, uh, SAS, and then we're looking for the third side. I'm thinking cosine law. For um, sine law, you want to have some type of. I used to tell my students, you want to make a cross, so you can know that you have. We need another angle here to be able to sort of think about cosine law. I would think. All right. Well, anyway, let's let's see what we can do with this guy. So let's first of all simplify it a little bit. So the beauty of this is because these guys are fixed, I can sub them right ahead into this guy. So I'm going to sub in five squared plus that's a five, believe it or not, eight squared minus two, and then five times eight cos of theta. So I'm left with c squared, and then I'll reduce these two down, so 5 squared. So 25 plus 64, 89. And then minus 2 times 5 times 8, which is 80. And then cos of theta. So it's so tempting to want to do the math here and go 89 subtract 80 is 9, and then I know 9 cos theta. You cannot do that. And the reason is because these are not like terms. 89 is by itself. You have 89, and then I have negative 80 cos. So they're not the same. 
So you have to be really careful. You cannot combine those. But what we can do at this step is take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So let's write this step out. d over dt, c squared, is equal to d over dt, 89 minus 80 cos theta. All right, so the derivative of c squared with respect to time is 2c and times dc over dt. So remember, we need this dc over dt part as a chain rule. So if you're not sure on that, you can go back and look at one of my chain rule videos or one of my implicit differentiation videos. But that's what we're doing. Um, now we'll take the derivative of each of these things individually. Derivative of 89, just the constants of 0. So that's really just gone. And the derivative of negative 80 cos theta. So that's the derivative of cos theta is um, negative sine. So really this negative is going to go away. So I end up with 80 sine theta times d theta over dt. So, we look at what we have here. Um, we have DC, dc over dt. That's what we're looking for. We're up here. Never wrote it out after. So that's good. We do not have what c is. So we can actually find it because we do have at what time this angle is or what the angle is at the time we're looking for. So pi over 3. So we can find c using this formula of the cosine law. Actually, we can just use this guy if you want. Just put in cos uh, equal to uh, cos theta pi over 3. We do not have what sine theta is. Um, so we might have to do a little bit of math on that to be able to figure this guy out. But we do have the angle. So we can input in sine pi over 3. And we have d, th uh, d theta over dt. So let's go ahead and take an aside over here and figure out what the value of c is. So c is equal to the square root. And I've already done a little bit of work here, so I'm going to use this guy here that uh, I can just put in pi over 3 to figure out the value of. So 89 minus 80 cos pi over 3. So let's see. 89 minus cos um, calculator in the wrong mode here we go so knowing your exact values will certainly help them making a video so I do not want to make a mistake here we go so we end up with the square root of 49 which is lovely which is 7 so I'm just going to double check that before I go any further so cos of pi over 3 is half so Half times 80 will be 40, and then 89 subtract 40 will be 49, so we're good to go. So that's what my C value is. So now that makes the life a lot easier when we're going ahead and calculating all this stuff. So I have 2 times 7 dc over dt is equal to, and if you wanted to solve it for dc over dt initially, you could as well, 80, then sine pi over 3, and that should be root 3 over 2, and then um, d theta, so that's pi over 45. So let's just do a little bit of math here now. So I'll reduce it down a little bit. So I'm going to now divide both sides, this is 14, so I'm going to divide both sides by 14, dt, dc, over dt is equal to 80 divided by 14 and sine of um, pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 times pi over 45 so I'm going to keep this as an exact value and I'm going to try to um, simplify as much as I can so I'm going to leave the root and the pi alone and I'm just going to worry about the 80 and the 14 and the 45 and reduce that down as much as I can. So it's not going to reduce much. 
leaves me with 88 pi root 3 over 63. So, not much of an answer, but it is what it is. And that would be, uh, since it's a side, and what was our side? It's measured in meters, so meters per second. So that should go there inside the cloud. But anyway, um, so I hope this helps, guys. Uh, another good example of a rela related rates question. Again, get as much practice as you can. Search them out, find them, do as many as you can. That, then you'll start to get the trick of it. All right, hope this helps. See you guys in class.